after a 42-year career in both the military and ACES, what do you think is the likelihood that in the next five or ten years Australia may end up in a, a war with China over Taiwan and would Australia, do you think, automatically um, join if the United States did? Um, well, on, on, on the latter question, I don't think anything is automatic. I think it's always um, got to be uh, put in context and, you know, and at the end of the day, an Australian government will always act in uh, the national interests, Australia's national interests, and um, I think everyone knows that. Any any political leader from any uh, nation state in the world knows that ultimately they'll act in in the nation's uh, interests at the time. So, so I don't know is the answer to you. I don't know the answer either to to either of your questions, John, because the suggestions that these things are preordained, they're not. Um, there is ample license for leaders and humans to make a difference and to step up and to change the sort of paths and the settings that we're on. And, uh, and I guess that's been my message today is that I hope that, that that happens. After holding this position for five years and having access to the intelligence that you have had, mm. are you more fearful or less fearful for the future of your children and grandchildren? Um, I'm an optimist. And I know that I'm talking about military and intelligence matters um, so I think that the challenge government faces always is finding the right balance of, of language to inform the public about uh, the future and how best to prepare the nation psychologically and with capabilities for the future. It's, it's incredibly demanding and it's, it's, it's a very, very difficult task because none of us have a crystal ball. We simply don't know. What I would say, and <clears throat> this is why I think an agency like ours is so important, humans matter. You know, there is human agency in the calculations that leaders, the political leaders make about conflict, peace and stability. And, you know, we know through history that leaders, statesmen, humans do have agency and we're not on a linear path. So to a degree, I think a lot of the um, assessment and analysis um, has to consider a linear path. If the current settings remain the way they are, what does that look like on a linear path? I think the reason why we have intelli you know, human intelligence agencies like ours is to get as close to the locus of power, to get as close to the decision makers who are weighing up these very difficult uh, strategic challenges that they face. Try and know and understand what they're thinking and what they're expressing to their inner circle so that we can make some better calculations about how we prepare, how, how government prepares, again, either psychologically or through military equipment or capabilities um, for, uh, for contingencies going forward. I, I remain, I, I remain a, a glass half full sort of guy. I would like to think that um, peace and stability continues to be the overarching um, uh, underpinning of any parent, of any grandparent for their children or for their grandchildren and that ultimately um, that sentiment will prevail. But of course history teaches us we've got to be ready for other possibilities.